Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be, at the very least, making a star on my review of Prelude to Foundation by Isaac Asimov. So as always, I go through, I read the blurb, I go through and check out my tabs, and then I share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. Now, at the time of filming, I'm only 45 pages in, but I have some uh, initial observations I would like to share with you guys, and uh, let's be honest, it helps me to pre-film. Oh, I almost lost my page! Dane reads... All right, winner of the Hugo Award for Best All-Time Series. The Foundation series is Isaac Asimov's iconic masterpiece. Unfolding against the backdrop of a crumbling galactic empire, the story of Harry Seldon's two foundations is a lasting testament to an extraordinary imagination, one whose unprecedented scale shaped science fiction as we know it today. In a time before the Foundation, Psycho History's creator Harry Seldon is made to stand before the Emperor of the crumbling galactic empire to present how his scientific theory of predicting the future might be applied to the real world. However, Harry refuses to deploy his theory for political gain, setting off instead with the reporter Chetta Hummin in quest of a place to safely apply this theory, Earth, the original home of humanity. All records of Earth have been lost to time. Harry will therefore have to look back into the past in order to seal the future of humanity forever. So I'm slowly working my way through the uh, Foundation series and I saw that this one technically comes first in terms of reading order and it was the only one I didn't have. So I ordered it online so that I could read it um, to then read the rest of the series, you know? And so we get this interesting conversation which I'd like to share, so... Um, Demoiselle permitted himself a small smile. Either the Minister of Science, a man of little acumen, is mistaken, or the mathematician is. Surely the matter of foretelling the future is a children's dream of magic. Is it, Demoiselle? People believe in such things. People believe in many things, sire. But they believe in such things, therefore it doesn't matter whether the forecast of the future is true or not. If a mathematician should predict a long and happy reign for me, a time of peace and prosperity for the Empire, hey, would that not be well? It would be pleasant to hear, certainly, but what would it accomplish, sire? But surely if people believe this, they would act on that belief. Many a prophecy, by the mere force of its being believed, is transmuted to fact. These are self-fulfilling prophecies. Indeed, now that I think of it, it was you who once explained this to me. And a great line at the bottom of this, uh, Demoiselle said, As usual, sire, you make good sense. We live in troubled times, and it would be worthwhile to calm them in a way that would require neither money nor military effort, which, in recent history, have done little good and much harm. Very true of our own world. And uh, we get a reference to a loose cannon, and they're like, what's a, what's a cannon? And he says, oh, it's an archaic, uh, archaic phrase. A great line here. I'll be leaving tomorrow, and besides, I couldn't afford it. Mathematicians deal with large numbers sometimes, but never in their income. And then we get into this this vehicle, which I think is interesting because this reminds me of just like the way that automated self-driving cars are going and the way that they are actually self, uh, safer than human drivers. Selden, who had been automatically strapped in by a webbing restraint, felt himself pushed down into his seat and then up against the wedding. He said, that didn't feel like anti-gravity. It wasn't, said Hummin. That was a small jet reaction, just enough to take us up to the tubes. What appeared before them now looked like a cliff pattern with cave openings, like a draft board. Hummin manoeuvred towards the opening Mark D7, avoiding other taxis that were heading for other tunnels. You could crash easily, said Selden, clearing his throat. So I probably would if everything depended on my senses and reactions, but the taxi is computerised, and the computer can overrule me without trouble. The same is true for the other taxis. So I thought this was uh, very telling, this reflects our own world here. Um, so we go, where's the money gone? Into other things, we've had centuries of unrest. The Navy is much larger and many times more expensive than it once was. The armed forces are much better paid in order to keep them quiet. Unrest, revolts, minor blazes of civil war all take their toll. But it's quiet under Cleon. We've had 50 years of peace. Yes, but soldiers who are well paid would resent having that pay reduced just because there's peace. Admirals resist mothballing ships and having themselves reduced in rank simply because there is less for them to do. So the money still goes unproductively to the armed forces and vital areas of the social good are allowed to deteriorate. That's what I call decay, don't you? I just thought this was interesting, this little cultural note. We're talking about social pressures. I'm not exactly a galactic traveller, but I've had to involve myself in a great deal of social history. On the planet of Daral, there was a time when premarital sex was absolutely free. Multiple sex was allowed for the unmarried, and public sex was frowned upon only when traffic was blocked. And yet, after marriage, monogamy was absolute and unbroken. The theory was that by working off all one's fantasies first, one could settle down to the serious business of life. And we get this, uh, a print book. It was hard to tell whether Dawes was shocked or amused. That's Stone Age. It's certainly pre-Empire, said Selden, but not entirely so. Have you ever seen a print book? Considering that I'm a historian. Of course, Harry. I've seen print books. You've probably seen them too. Here's one. Interesting line here. Uh, still, I think that all men are equal. Even women. We get a reference to a robot named Bendar, and I just thought of Futurama. 
So we get a reference to a renegade and all like this. It says, uh, you didn't tell me anything about that, interposed doors. If you had, I would have told you that it's not a proper name. It's another archaic word and it means roughly what traitor would mean in galactic. The older word has a greater aura of fear about it. A traitor, somehow, sneaks to his treason, but a renegade flaunts it. Great line. And uh, I think this is interesting because this, we see this happen in our own world, you know. Dora shook her head. I can't bear to hear a human being spoken of with contempt just because of his group identification, even by other human beings. It's these respectable people here who create those hooligans out there. And other respectable people, said Selden, who create these respectable people. These mutual animosities are as much a part of humanity. Then you'll have to deal it with your, then you'll have to bloody include it into your psycho history. That last line was obviously paraphrased. Cat's going mad over there. Overall, then, prelude to Foundation by Isaac Asimov. Some really good stuff in here, um, and I think it does a really good job of setting up the Foundation books. I don't think um, you should necessarily read this before the original Foundation books, because if you don't like this, people are going to say, well, you didn't actually read the Foundation books, so that you should give those a chance. Uh, and you can actually come back to this pretty much at any point, I would say, um, because although, um, although it is a prequel, you could read it first or you could read it at any point. It just gives you that background information without really requiring to be read at any particular point in the series, I reckon. Overall, I gave it a 4 out of 5. My only criticism would really be towards the end it did start to flag a bit. It probably could have done with being about 50 pages shorter. And they should have taken it out of this last 80 odd pages and just turned this bit down to about 30 pages. Because the first big old chunk of it was great. But yeah, Prelude to Foundation by Isaac Asimov. So there we have it, that's what I made of Prelude to Foundation by Isaac Asimov. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.